Hi everybody, Paul Cameron here from speedupmyjobsearch.com with a clip from our monthly jobs driven networking group, which meets every third Thursday. Let's take a look. Can we force other people to talk about our strengths? Is that possible to do uh, and, and basically control the conversation? And, and if we can, how do we control a conversation? Do more words mean more control? And I loved this image when I found this with all the, the kind of virus stuff going around and this guy kind of spewing words out like a virus uh, got me kind of thinking in my own head. I wonder if is if there's an invention like this someplace, does, does anybody make a, a mask that we can put on ourselves to <laughs> stop us from talking so much? Uh, I know I could use that uh, uh, sometimes, but uh, that would be great. So if you need a million dollar idea, there it is. But how do, you, how do you control a conversation? And when you really break it down, the person who talks the most, they dominate the conversation, but the person who's asking the most questions, they're engaging the other person in the conversation, involving them, and they're controlling the direction of the conversation. So it, it, you're not necessarily in control of the conversation just because you're the only one talking and everybody else has to sit and listen. It's kind of like, um, you know, if you're, you're giving directions you know, if somebody gives you directions, you can listen to them say, you know, hey, you got to take a left up at the light. And then when you get to where the old gas station used to be, take a take a left. And then you're going to, you know, how would I know that? And you're trying to remember all this stuff. Maybe you're going to remember it. Maybe you're not. Whereas if they said, hey, it's you need to keep heading in a northeast direction and they handed you a compass. Right. And you, you're engaged with that compass. You, even if you get off track a little bit, you can get back on track because you know where you're trying to get to. Uh, asking questions allows you to really guide the conversation so much better than, than just telling them uh, all about you. Elegant persuasion is when the other person thought it was their idea, right? And that's, that can only really be done through asking questions. So I'm going to share with you uh, kind of a uh, magic trick. It's kind of a reverse magic trick here, because instead of you picking a card and then me guessing your card, I'm going to pick the card I want you to pick. And then through a couple of simple questions, I'm going to guide you there. So you pick this card. And instead of going through the whole exercise, we're just going to do this with suits. Uh, you know, of, of which suit card am I holding right here? And I'll keep it on camera just so you can see that I'm not switching cards based on what somebody says. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do this uh, real quick. If you had to pick a color, we're going to narrow things down a little bit. Uh, you want to choose a color. What color suit would you choose? Red black. or would you choose black? I choose black. You choose black. Okay. So with black, we're going to get rid of the red ones. All right. So now you can mute yourself again. I'll pick someone else here. Of the Ryan, I see. I see you on the screen here. Uh, choosing another suit. Would you choose clubs or would you choose spades? Spades. Spades. Spades it is. All right. Now, that worked out much better than normal. We could have done that all the way down to the, the exact card. But, uh, and it's not going to work every time because if you would have said, if, if Steve would have said red, I would have said, you know what, Steve, I totally agree with that. You know, we just put Valentine's Day behind us. Let's get rid of red. Now, let's move on to these last two. And if she would have said clubs, I'm like, yeah, clubs, it sounds kind of violent to me. Let's get rid of clubs. And we're left with spades. Now, let me tell you why it's so great to talk about spades. All right. So through my questions, guiding the conversation, you know, she's not talking about her priorities. She's not talking about her company's goals. She's not talking about how much snow is outside. She's talking about spades and clubs and hearts because I'm asking questions about those things. So when you ask, can you control someone else's thoughts and make them talk about what you want to talk about and your strengths? Absolutely. Ask them questions that will make them talk about. Does that make sense? So a couple of quick little just social psychology uh, tricks that go into play here that will help make it happen for you. If you're ever offering somebody a choice between this or that, make the second option the one you want them to say, because they will, the studies have shown that a vast majority of the time, people will latch on to the second thing you say. And sometimes you're going to get in an interview and you know, you'd be sitting right in front of them 
and they're looking at their computer screen and clicking away. Uh huh. You know. Mm, yeah. Really. You know. And obviously, they're not listening, right? You have no idea what you're talking about. They're just they're filling the space. If you want to get them involved in the conversation again, ask them questions about them. You can ask questions like, you know, how did you how did you get into this role? I know you've been here for a while. Were you promoted into this role, or uh, did you? you know, interview directly into it or asking them specific questions uh, about them. You know, what, what types of perks were you surprised by when you joined uh, here that you really liked? Those kinds of personal questions uh, will, will draw them in. And I'm seeing in the chat also, but is it a new position or one that has recently been opened? And depending on the answer, I would ask, uh, would I be, what would I be focusing on first? I do want to just address real quick, and thank you, Elizabeth, for that. If you do ask them, is it a, is it a recently opened position or a newly created uh, position? If they say uh, it's recently opened, not newly created, so it's a replacement role, it's important to find out whether it's replacement or whether it's a newly created position, uh, mainly because the, the replacement positions will fill faster. They have a higher probability to fill versus a newly created position where it's gonna take a bunch of rounds and, until they figure out what they really want. But if they say it's, it's recently open, we need to replace somebody, I would caution you against saying, uh, well, what happened? Why did that person not wanna work for you anymore? Why did they leave you, right? You obviously wouldn't phrase it that way, but it's going to be taken that way, no matter how you phrase it, right? And uh, kind of old rule of thumb, you know, it doesn't matter what we think we said. The only thing that matters is what they heard, right? So we need to speak to what they're, what they're hearing. So I would, you, you want to find that out of, of, you know, what's giving me the opportunity to work on this? Is this, did you just recently create this because of growth? Or did somebody, you know, get promoted onto in the greener pastures or along those lines? And if they say, well, you know, somebody left or, or whatever they tell you, then you can ask them a very strategic question of, well, if I, you know, just be straightforward with you to help you with your next hiring decision. If you could go back in time and time and re-interview that person, what would you have wished you asked that person that you now have a chance to ask me? And we'll talk about it because now you can very directly address the reason that they that they left. Let's go to 201. <clears throat> if you spoke to someone who needed a IT executive job search coach, I'll use myself in this example. If you were talking to an IT executive, you find yourself in that conversation and you think that they could benefit from having uh, a knowledgeable coach, who would you recommend they call first? Who would be the first person that you'd recommend. And here's the most important part of this question. Whatever they say, react positively. If I ask that question and they say, you need to talk to Janet Rand, I'm going to say, absolutely. She is outstanding. Uh, you need help with communications uh, and fine tuning your presentations and, and, and the job search in general. She is an expert. I would, I would highly recommend uh, that, that they meet with her. And then I'm going to go on to say, what would you recommend that I do to become your go-to recommendation? Is there anything I might be able to do to become that person for you? Or if they say, you, you know, I'd refer you all day, every day. Great. Well, what do you recommend I do to make sure I stay that person as your, your go-to recommendation? Because right? that's going to get them then thinking about you in those conversations that you want them thinking about you. I hope that was helpful for you. And please check out the rest of our YouTube channel for more tips and strategies to help you with your job search. I'd love to meet you at the next one. So I hope you can make it. Thanks for watching.